Hey, hey, Tony Gas here. Jeff popping in. Now listen, this this might try to get my long teaching on here so you'll be able to see the time that's on here. I don't know where this one will end up at, but I want to talk about this topic. I talked about it the other day, but want to touch on it again and kind of break it down and kind of go through it one more time. One more again, what my cousins used to say. And y'all got to forgive me having these hats on and whatnot. But listen to me. I was talking to one of my mentees in South Africa. You know, he's in uh, Johannesburg. And he recently got married, a young businessman, and he pitching a TV show and whatnot. And I told him, said to him, I said, listen, I said, the key to success, the key to success is treating your wife like a queen. That's the key. That's the one key. You want to be a millionaire. You want to have success and you want to have longevity as a man. Your key to long lasting success. It don't mean you're not going to have tough times. It don't mean that you're not going to struggle, go through, mismanage. But the key to longevity. The key to long last success is how you treat your wife. And we're going to go through that and we're going to break this down. And you need to get this in your spirit. And if you are a woman watching this, send this to every man that's in your phone. Don't care. Don't worry about his feelings. Don't worry about him getting mad. Don't worry about him barking and barking and complaining because if he's not a millionaire, he hearing from a millionaire. And he hearing from a millionaire who became a millionaire on paper before the age of 30. With no mentor, with no college degree, with no team, no agent, no manager, no assistant, no publicist, no nothing. I had a wife. I got a wife. I got two sons. And I had a business partner. Who he would front load some money, but the money didn't actually go to my business. The money was for projects that did not make no money. So that had really nothing to do with me becoming the man that I am today. Now, as soon after I sent that message to that young man, he gave me the thumbs up or what have you. And he was like, got you, bro. Right after I sent that, I sent a message to a Division I coach. It's a Division I athletic coach, sports coach. And I told him, because his team doing good, his team shocking and surprising right now. And I worked with the team as one of the mentors, mentoring the players and doing group sessions and then one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Team doing good. Ironically, this is kind of par for the course. Whenever I work with a team, a lot of times some of the players, if they got the pieces and the coach is doing what they're supposed to be doing, things start to come together. This this team right here, I won a national championship with them. The, the year after I started working with them, they won a national championship. And see, this is why I try to teach people. That's why I try to teach people and help people understand. And I got the national championship ring. <laughs> it's so heavy, it fell out of there. Got the national championship ring right here. My wife calling me, but this message here is real important. So I got to, she, she know I'm a working man. She probably called him check to see if I need some food or something. So, this right, that right there, national championship reign, okay? They set the record for the largest reign in the history of championship reigns. See where it say on, on the side of here? I'm trying to hide this. I need my pedicure. See what it say on the side of there? I ain't buy this offline. They say Tony Gaskins. See that Gaskins right there? Yeah, I like to show that off every now and then. And then... Nah, listen to me. 
Let's tell him, because we're going to get into this. I'm going to break this down for you, okay? This other championship ring. Big 12 champion. Big 12 champion. Champion, now. Champion. So you hearing from a champion life coach. You ain't just hearing, see, now, what other life coach that come on here and teach hour-long videos? What a Oh, Lord, I never really looked at this one too closely. <laughs> man, they... Man, they looked out for me. Look at her. This will say, this will say gaskets on it. All right, that's say gaskets on it, man. But listen to me, man. Come on now. <laughs> that would say gaskets on it. Big 12 champion. Now listen to me. So you ain't so I want you to understand what, what I'm telling you. This this right here, this is backed. And now this this will be a problem if you're an atheist. This is backed by God. This is backed by God. And this also backed by science. And when I say science, I mean biology. I mean biology. It might even be a little bit of anatomy in there. Might be a little chemistry in there. But listen to me. See, what men have to realize is that a woman was made for a man. I was listening to the Bible today. And I I was in acts and I just let it play. I let it play while I'm working and certain parts suggest the Lord will let it be louder. And it went through acts and then Romans and then got to Corinthians before I started, you know, working the way I had to stop it. But there was a part in there and it could have been Corinthians where it said the man was not made for the woman. The woman was made for the man. That's what that's what the whole of Bible says. <clears throat> and so as a man, you have to think about this. If God made a woman for you, that means he feels you need help. That means your creator feels you need another half. And so what that means is if your creator gives you something that he has handmade, if your creator gives you a help me that is fearfully and wonderfully made, and he tells you, listen to me now, <clears throat> and he tells you, that she is the weaker vessel. <laughs> hey, pull your chair out now. Pull your chair out. <laughs> pull your chair out. Get your pen. Get your pad now. Listen to me. What you think your creator going to do with you? What do you think your creator is going to do with you, to you, and for you? If you mistreat what he has given you. If he loves her as his daughter. What do you think a father will do to you if you hurt his daughter? What do you think a father want to do to you? He might not do it, but what do you think he want to do to you? <laughs> now, see, her, her father may have to get her permission to do something to you. But, but guess who don't need her permission? Her heavenly father. See, her heavenly father does not need her permission to knock you flat on your behind. Her heavenly father don't need her permission to delete you from the face of this earth. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. See, the thing that men is missing today and this is where men, this is why men is in the poor state that we are in. Because men are forgetting the key to your favor. The Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. Now, one, one thing you're going to realize is that several other major religions quote the Holy Bible, especially Islam. When, when you hear Muslims teaching, they always include Bible scriptures. 
So what that lets you know is that this book is a book of wisdom and it is a source of wisdom. So <clears throat> the second brother that I sent the message to, the coach, you know, we were talking about that. And we were talking about these different, you know, teachings. And one thing you got to realize is if you have a woman, whether she your girlfriend, fiance, or wife, she got to be treated the same. And what I mean by that is she have to be treated. You have to treat her. And, and I want you to challenge yourself with this. The way you talk to her and the way you handle her, the way you treat her, remind yourself that her creator is sitting right beside you. Come on now, think about it. When have you pictured your creator and her creator in the room with you when you dealing with her, when you talking to her, when? See, the, and the only thing a man is subject to is God. In the same part of the Bible, and I wasn't paying attention to what chapter and all that it was in, I th but I think I was in Corinthians, but I could have been in Romans. But it said that the man is the head of the woman, but God is the head of the man. No, that Christ is the head of the man and God is the head of Christ. I say, wow. Okay. So if you have been given a position and a role to protect and to love and to provide for this woman, Given this position from her creator and your creator, this is a very, very high call. You being entrusted with this. And see, this is how this connects to a man's success. Because when you treat your wife the way she is supposed to be treated. And when I say treated like a queen, I don't mean in the literal sense, in the traditional sense of a king and queen because queens was, you know, treated rather badly. So I'm not talking about that. So you got to understand that's, a, that's a metaphor. But what I'm saying is you treat her like royalty. Treat her like her creator, God's royal daughter. God's princess. This is hard. But why is it hard? It's hard because it requires selflessness. You have to become selfless instead of being selfish. It's hard because it requires obedience. You got to be obedient to your creator. It's hard because it requires emotional intelligence. You have to be cool, calm, and collected. You got to be slow to anger and quick to forgive. You got to be giving and you have to be forgiving. You have to be loving and you have to be compassionate. But you also have to be passionate. So this is why it's hard. It's hard because the world is none of those things. The world meaning the way the world treats you as a man and the way your job treats you, none of it is easy. None of it is loving. None of it is compassion, compassionate. None of it is passionate. None of it is giving. None of it is forgiving. So we oftentimes want to give what we're getting. And from the world, all we get is a hard time. So then we give a hard time to our wives, to our women, the woman that you with. When I say women, I'm not talking about you having multiple women. I'm talking about men with our, to the women. And so we give what we get. Somebody 
so eloquently and geniusly coined this phrase that says the they call it the kick the cat syndrome. And what it was talking about is the job, the boss comes down hard on the man. Then the man goes home and he comes down hard on the wife. And then the wife goes and she comes down hard on the son. Then the son goes and kicks the cat. Like they say, for those who use curse words, S roll, runs downhill. Talking about boo-boo crap runs downhill as a man when you get to a place to where you can control your emotions and i was talking to my 16 year old almost 17 year old son about this controlling emotions does not mean that you don't show emotions controlling emotions mean you don't get too high you don't get too low as the quote says let praise nor criticism change who you are. I believe it's Mother Teresa's quote. You don't get too high. You don't get too low. You express your emotions. You pretty much can express all emotions, but you do it in a healthy way. You do it in a way that you're not attention seeking. You're not manipulating. You're not deceiving. You're not coercing. Coercing means to force. And you're not gaslighting or triggering. You do it in a healthy way. You do it because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you say is what you're feeling, but you're processing your feelings. But before you say and before you do, you process it by yourself. And then you evaluate the possible outcomes of that, of those words or that action. And you look at all of the possible outcomes, including best, connect, best case scenario and worst case scenario. Then as a man, you decide, is this a proper action and or is this a proper word? Should I say this? Should I do this? Now, when you have this level of self-control and you have this level of emotional intelligence and you are in submission to God, you're in submission to your creator, that brings humility. So now you have a humble heart. You have an obedient heart. You have a kind heart, a willing heart, a loving heart, a giving heart, a forgiving heart, a compassionate heart, a passionate heart. You have all of these things wrapped into one. Guess what that equals? It equals true strength and it equals true confidence. Because only a weak man beats up on a woman. Emotionally, verbally, or physically. Only a weak man. Only a weak man lies. Only a weak man cheats. Only a weak man manipulates. Only a weak man deceives. Only a weak man controls. Real men who have come into their own understand their strength. He knows that he is the strongest on the face of the planet. And by knowing he is the strongest on the face of the planet and knowing that he has dominion on earth, he feels no need to take advantage of a woman. He feels no need to dictate, to control, to manipulate, to coerce or abuse a woman because he knows he is the most dominant, the strongest, and he has been given dominion over all fish, fowl, and beast of the earth. He is at the top of the food chain. He protects and he provides. He goes to war against the enemy, which may be a spiritual adversary. He doesn't go to war against his teammate, his helpmate, 
his help meet, his woman. He doesn't go to war against his children. He goes to war against the enemy. The enemy within and the enemy without. But the enemy without is not flesh and blood. It's spirits and high principalities. That's what the man who is surrendered understands. So when you learn as a man how to be faithful to one woman, but not only be faithful, but protect and provide emotionally, financially, spiritually, mentally, and physically. So what I mean by this is you not sleeping with another person, but emotionally cheating with another person nullifies your physical faithfulness. You being faithful physically and emotionally, but yet being abusive verbally, physically, or emotionally, it nullifies your faithfulness. So what I want you to understand is the through line between success in your marriage and success in your business. Because with this, what you're creating in your relationship, these same attributes create success in the world, in business. Because the attributes that you develop in your marriage, and see me talking about this is making me stronger. It's making me wiser and it's holding me accountable. And it's reminding me to continuously day in and day out, treat my wife like a queen. Meaning the queen that I define, that I define the word, not based on history, not based on a country or a region. I define the royalty that God has instructed me to bestow upon my wife's life. So every day I'm treating her as the book of Ephesians says, as Christ loved the church. And when you think about that, you think about a sacrificial love. You think about grace, mercy, giving, forgiving, and everything that I've mentioned, passion, compassion, everything is all included. But now what happens is when you're focused on making your marriage the absolute best that it can be, what happens here is you create some things. So for one, you have to be creative because you are looking to find continual ways to show her that you love her. And so you lean to creativity. You're thinking outside of the box and you're always looking to give time and anything else that you can afford to give. Time is most expensive, so it is the most valuable. But outside of time, you may be able to give a gift, a thought, a service. So right now, my wife is getting her hair done in a voluminous way. And it was my idea. I sent her a picture and I said, hey, Go get your hair done. You've talked about this before. I want to take care of it. And that's what I mean. Thinking outside of the box. What can you do? What can you show? Day in and day out. Now, how that translates to business is you unlock the part of your brain that is creative. The part of your brain that thinks outside of the box. So then you go into your business and you start to innovate because now you're thinking, how can I give to my business, to my skill set, to my gift, to my company, whether you own it or not, what can I give that is creative, that is innovative, new and outside of the box? You develop that skill set and that mindset 
from your relationship. You unlocked that part of your brain in your relationship and then you took it to business and you used it in business. In your relationship, when you learn how to communicate and you learn how to express yourself to your woman and you're expressing your feelings, you're telling her why you love her. You're telling her what you love about her and you're telling her how you feel. You te you're telling her your hopes, your dreams, your fears. You're telling her what you need from her. You're not leaving her in the dark in any area. Now, when you take that to your business, you're able to communicate, identify and communicate the needs of your industry. You're also able to communicate your gifts, your skill sets and your unique proposition to the marketplace your unique skill set. So now what they call your USP unique selling point or what have you, that's what you're able to articulate. So in your sales copy, you're able to articulate in a way that is tied us back to your relationship. You're able to sell purely. You're able to provide a service or a product without manipulation without coercion, without deception. See, one of the things that I've learned about the sales industry and everybody who comes to me, they are very manipulative. Oftentimes they are very dishonest. They are very self-centered. They are very selfish. They are very persistent. They're a nuisance and they oversell and then they under deliver. That is the sales industry. That's what they do. Guess what? God has positioned me and I've learned from my relationship, I have learned how to earn $1 million plus every year with soft sales. I do not have high pressure sales. I do not have to oversell. I do not have to beg. I do not have to chase. I provide value. I give a very fair and oftentimes a beyond fair price. Let me give you an example. I've earned over a million dollars from YouTube alone in the last three or four years. So that will put me at an average of over $250,000 a year from YouTube alone. But what is my tactic on YouTube? No thumbnails. No custom thumbnails to sell you. No description box, which is actually how videos are picked up in the algorithm, is what a YouTube staff who reached out to me because YouTube offers help. That's what she told me. She said, Tony, people think it's the title. It's actually what you put in your description box. I don't write in my description box. I don't use keyword tags. I don't do shorts every day and or even every week. I don't go live every day or even every week. What do I do? I show up. Humble. Authentic. Real direct, communicative, transparent, real, raw, relatable, relevant, righteous. Guess what? All of those attributes that have allowed me to earn over a million dollars from my cell phone posted on YouTube come from my relationship. I communicate the same way with my wife. Same way I communicate here with my audience in my business, in my purpose, is how I communicate with my wife. Transparent, honest, real, raw, consistent, without gimmicks, without hooks, without tricks or trades, just direct. Now, 
Let me help you understand something. On TonyGassonsAcademy.com, when you go to that site today, I want you to look at the courses that you see, and then at the bottom, you're going to click View More Courses. It's going to bring up the same page, but then it's going to put a number at the bottom with arrow. I want you to click that arrow. When you click that arrow, it, you're going to be able to scroll through the courses. You're going to see a course that says YouTube for Beginners. In that course, I screen record my computer screen showing you how to start your YouTube channel, showing you how to post a video, upload a video, showing you how I do my videos. And I'm also showing you on there, I'm showing you my earnings from that previous year when I shot the course. Now, if you created a business that makes you $250,000 a year. And someone said, tell me what you know. Most people will say no. Most people don't share tips, secrets, tools, anything. They don't even put a price on it. I have clients who will not share what they know, who will not share from their success, even for a price. It's very selfish. It's very limited. It's very, it's a scarcity mindset. It's a loser mindset. Hate to say it, but I tell my clients this too. It's a loser mindset. You're acting like a loser. And that's why you're not going to be successful forever. Because when you become successful, you should teach other people how to become successful. But teaching is a trade. It is a business. It is a profession. It is a purpose. So therefore, if you give your time to it, what is time? the most valuable asset you have. So there should be a price for your time and for the value and the proven knowledge that you give. But here's what you're going to see. My course right now is $19.70. How much sense does it make for... How much sense does it make for someone to sell a course teaching what has earned them over a million dollars and what will earn them millions more dollars. How much sense does it make? But uh, what does that look like? So let me ask you this. How much sense does it make for a man to pay the price for everything you've done wrong. Everything you've done wrong, let's say everything you've done wrong, you deserve the death penalty. How much sense does it make for someone else to come and say, hey, I'll get the death sentence for you. I don't know you, never met you. You don't know me, but I'll, I'll do your death sentence for you. How much sense does that make? Would you do it? That's what Jesus Christ did. So when Ephesians 5 said, love your wife as Christ loved the church, that in itself is a command, but it's also a blueprint and an example of the level of love that you should give to your wife. And it said he presents her blemish and spot free. So, what I did when I was making $8.50 an hour, <laughs> I told my wife, you don't have to work no more. <laughs> Who is going to tell their wife, you don't have to work no more when you make $8.50 an hour? I maxed out at $10 an hour. But because I did that, I did not force my wife to work. I did not beg her to work. I did not demand that she work. Our son was in the intense care unit. He came out of the intense care unit. Even when he got in daycare, I did not make my wife go to work. What I did is I used creativity to use my gifts. And I was obedient to God in my marriage and obedient to God in my business. And God took me from making $20,000 a year to blessing me to be able to leave my job from a 
investment slash loan that a friend gave me that would cover one year of my expenses. And that next year I made $147,000 after just having made $20,000 on a job. And I had made $40,000 in my business while I was working my job. And then when I went full time in my gifts, doing what I do before having YouTube, before having Instagram, before having all of that, I'm working, son. I hit, I get with you in a little bit. Before having all of that, my son just finished the workout. Come and tell him what he did. I hit one hundred and forty-seven thousand. The next year, I went to two hundred and fifty thousand, and then it was like two hundred and eighty thousand. Then it was like three fifty or four fifty. Then guess what? After that four fifty, I came back down to like two eighty, three hundred. But then I went back up to 450 to 500. And then guess what? I went over 1.5 million. From like four, 500,000 a year to over 1.5 million over that next year. Listen, the attributes and the characteristics that I developed in marriage, I just used those same things in business. With no tricks, with no gimmicks. Like, I'm not even holding my phone landscape. I'm holding my phone portrait mode. You're not even supposed to do that on YouTube unless you're doing a short. This phone's supposed to be landscape, meaning sideways right now. You clicked on this video without a custom thumbnail. When you look in the description box, there's it's empty. When If you can see keyword tags, there's none. So... You're watching this video, but then give this video a couple of days and you may see that thousands of people have watched this video. Guess what? It's the same blueprint from my relationship. So this is the thing. The reason why sales people are oftentimes miserable from one sales job to the next sales job, one company to the next is because of what it's built on. It's built on pressure. It's built on applying pressure. It's built on stretching the truth. It's built on not caring about the customer and only caring about the sale. So imagine those men in their relationship. High pressure, not caring about the woman and her feelings and her body. And who she is and how she is, but only caring about themselves. If that is their sales tactics in business, but they may make millions in business. But guess what? It's not going to be millions with peace and it's not going to be millions with happiness, nor will it be millions with longevity. So I'd I rather make a hundred thousand and have peace than make a million and have turmoil. I'd rather make 100000 for the rest of my life. I'd rather make 50000 for the rest of my life and never go through a divorce than to make $5 million and have to go through divorce after divorce or any divorce. So what I want you to understand is that in your marriage and dealing with your woman, in your relationship, you have to develop the attitude and the mindset and the emotional control, the emotional regulation, the emotional intelligence to be able to deal with your woman and to deal with her in a healthy way, to deal with her in a fair way, in a loving way. And you have to go above and beyond. You got to go above and beyond. So if you go above and beyond in your marriage, you're going to go above and beyond in your business. So what that may look like is you may give more value than what you're actually charging for. And then you may give more content or more service than what you're actually being paid for. For example, we're about to hit 40 minutes on this video. Feel like 10 minutes to me, but we're about to hit 40 minutes. 40 minutes staring into a camera phone, portrait mode with no editing is not very common on YouTube. Most, most YouTubers and look around most YouTubers without gimmicks and mouse pad and desktop 
and professional camera and editing and voiceovers and clips from other people videos you will find very few youtubers who teach a lesson for more than 10 or 15 minutes consistently but guess what if you go above and beyond in your marriage you train yourself and you teach yourself how to give more than what you're being compensated for. This is a life lesson. So it translates to your business. So here's the thing. If you love bomb your wife, meaning you shower her with love or you shower her with gifts, but then you cheat on her or you abuse her or you control her, guess what's going to happen? What's going to happen is you're going to go into business and you're going to love bomb your business. You're going to go into business and you're going to give crazy effort, crazy service, crazy whatever. And then you're going to start to get greedy or you're going to start to cut corners. You're going to take shortcuts and you're going to start to fail. So you're going to have a really, really great year. And then you're going to have terrible year after terrible year after terrible year because you do not have character. Because now you're lying, you're cheating, you're stealing, you're overselling and under delivering. You're not honoring your word. And it's not that you're making mistakes. You're making deliberate choices to cut corners. But you do the same thing in your relationship. So now you're doing that in your business. And that's why your business or your career is struggling because you're cutting corners and you're taking advantage and you're trying to get an advantage and you want to be paid more than the work that you do instead of doing more work than what you're being paid. And you want to complain and you want to bicker and you want to talk bad about the boss and you want to talk bad about the job or the coworkers or your employees if you own the company and you want to steal from the IRS, from the government, you want to cheat, you want to cut corners, you want to do all these things and you want to do it intentionally and you want to do it consistently if that's how you do in your business that's because that's what you do in your marriage you're lying or cheating or abusing so when you develop a pure relationship that is based on integrity and character, love, service, compassion, giving, forgiving, grace, mercy, understanding, communication. When you develop that in your relationship and you take all of that to your business, you're going to see that success in business is a byproduct. And, and what you have to understand about success, success is not a moment in time. Success is not just an event. Success is a lifestyle. Success is, it's, it's long, it has longevity. See, a flash in the pan or an overnight success isn't real success. So what you have to understand is you have to be consistent in your life and you got to be consistent in your marriage. That's why I created the brand, Consistency. Go get you a t-shirt or a hoodie. It's called consistencygear.com. I think it's called. It's my website. But again, that's another business. So let me tell you something. So with this here creativity and with this focus in my marriage and me not cheating, me not being unfaithful, I'm able to go into my purpose and be faithful to my purpose. So I'm faithful and I'm creative in my marriage. I'm sacrificial in my marriage. I'm giving in my marriage. I'm forgiving in my marriage. I'm compassionate in my marriage. I'm expressive in my marriage. I communicate in my marriage. So then I come to my business and I bring all of those same things to my business. And by bringing that to my business, guess what it has produced? Over 70 online courses, over 20 books for sale on Amazon.com and other book retailers. It has produced over nearly 15 companies, not all still active, and websites right now that's up and running, you know. MyMentor.life. That's residual income for my family. And it's providing an opportunity for other coaches to get clients. 
So on MyMentor.life, these coaches, you can go to MyMentor.life, not .com, .life, L-I-F-E, MyMentor.life. Go and go to it and see it. One of my one of my uh, supporters on YouTube made this hat for me with the TG, and I think on the back, boom, MyMentor.life. She put that on there. So you could go to MyMentor.life, book a session with me, or you could book a session with any coach. Y'all got to forgive me right now. I'm looking rough, and uh, still from a workout, still ain't did what I need to do. My mentor life. That that's a that's a stream of income, but it's purpose based, cause it's blessing other people. It's blessing you, cause you could go and book a coach for as little as twenty five dollars an hour, and as much as five hundred dollars an hour, and that's where I'm at on the site. You can. These coaches, you can go sign up as a coach. And when I'm driving people to it, like I just drove thousands of people to my mentor that life, they see your profile. They're going to click through, click through, click through, click through. They like what your eyes tell them. Your eyes is the window to your soul. They like your headshot. They like your smile. They like your favorite quote that you got on there. They like your bio. They book a session with you. Guess what? All of that money goes right to your PayPal account. I don't get a cut of it. All you're doing to be on that site, you're paying $200 a year. $200 to have a business in a box. What business can you run for $200 a year? I'll wait. And people have, see some people who have not developed an abundant mindset in their life, in their relationship, they'll go to mymentor.life and they'll sign up and because they don't get instant gratification, because they're not getting booked out the wazoo, they'll cancel. Not realizing that you never know when your breakthrough going to come. You never know when my breakthrough going to come. You never know when a company may come and say, listen, we want to give all your coaches X amount of dollars to, to have a 10% stake in, in their coaching. And we want to put up millions to market this site and to market these coaches. But we're going to get 10%. But we're going to cut all of them a check. You never know. But somebody who say, oh, $200, I can't afford that. That's too much for me. They're going to miss out if the Lord say that's going to happen. Or when my brand get to the to that whole nother stratosphere. So where when I mention the name, it's 100,000 people going to the site versus 1,000 people going to the site. And then here they is off of my back, off of my sweat, off of my work. They got a full-time business that they running. But see, it take an abundant mindset. But if you're selfish in your relationship, you're going to be selfish in your life. If you got limited thinking in your relationship, what have you done for me late for you? lately? You're going to have limited thinking in your business. So that's why people, they'll get on there. Oh, I ain't get, I ain't get all it. I ain't get a million clients. I ain't get, but all it. I ain't get a, but they never put in the people that do that. They never put in what they were supposed to put in. They never invested in a professional headshot. They never invested in a professional bio. They never posted about their coaching business on their Facebook every day or every other day. And so guess what? That same mentality come from how they deal with their relationships. They want more in return than they're willing to give. So that's why in certain ways, the quote that says how you do one thing is how you do everything. It's not 100% true, but... In certain areas, it does correlate. It is true in a lot of ways. So you have to think about that. You got to ask yourself, how am I treating my woman? Am I taking from her? Because I'm lying to her. I'm manipulating her. I'm deceiving her. Are you cheating on her with porn? Are you cheating on her with masturbation, lusting after a woman booty on Instagram? Are you cheating on her at, at, at work? Are you cheating on her on a dating app? Are you cheating on her in the email? Are, are you cheating on her on social media? Are you cheating on her with your ex? Are you controlling her? Telling her what she can and can't wear, where she can and can't go, who she can and can't hang out with? Are you trying to dictate and dominate and control? Are you abusing her emotionally, physically, verbally? How do you think your creator going to bless you in your life, in your business, if that's how you're treating his princess, if that's how you're treating his daughter. 
How do you expect the king of kings, the Lord of lords, to do anything that's substantial in your life if that's how you're treating the one thing he gave you? And he put it in his word. A man who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. Listen, favor from the Lord. Favor is a very long word. It's a whole lot in that F. It's a whole lot in that A. It's a whole lot in that V. It's a whole lot in that O. And it's a whole lot in that R. That favor, do you hear me? That favor is overwhelming. That favor is a, it, it is a rush. It is a wind. It is a mighty, mighty, mighty blessing in your life. God's favor is second to none. It is unreal. And I'm going to tell you what God's favor has done for me. It has covered a multitude of sin. It has covered my mistakes. It has covered my ignorance. It has covered my shortcomings. It has covered my mismanagement of money. God's favor has covered me, has graced me, and I found mercy in the favor of the Lord. And so the favor that he gives me, he asked me to give the favor to my wife. And I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> what, this is what I learned. But I want to ask you this. Do it make sense? And I, and I want you to stretch your mind. I want you to stretch your mind. Let's say you bring home $1,000 a month. At $1,000 a month, you may say, man, I'm in a deficit because it's, bills cost a lot. Does it make sense for you to give your wife $100 a month if you make $1,000? If it don't make sense for you to give her $100 a month and you make $1,000, and then you finding a way to live within your means, and of course, that's just a random number because it wouldn't, for most adult men, even at 18, you may bring in 1200 at the least. But in today's climate, it, that it may be 2000 at the least. So imagine having $2,000, you still you still tight. But give your wife, give your wife 200 of it. Give her 200 of it to honor her, to bless her, and to help her take care of some of her needs. And then be creative to create a second stream of income. And then a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and a seventh if needed. And then every new stream, give her 10%. Give her 10% of the gross off the top, not, not of the net, of the gross. Gross is the, the total amount before taxes, before processing fees, before business expenses, give a 10%. What you just taught yourself, you just taught yourself abundance. You just taught yourself sacrifice. You just taught yourself selflessness. You just taught yourself a sacrificial love. This is what I found out in my life. The more I give my wife, the more God gives me. I didn't want to believe it, man. Listen to me. I didn't want to believe it, man. I did not want to believe it. And when I stopped giving to my wife, when I stopped like loving her the way Christ loved the church, God pulled his hand back from me. Things changed in my life. Things, things went down. And then when I realized what I had changed, and the only thing I had changed is I had hardened my heart toward my wife. When I hardened my heart toward my wife, God hardened his heart toward me. And then when I softened my heart toward my wife, God softened his heart toward me. And, and it's crazy how this works, but this is something that just has been consistent. And, I, and I've tried to not make sense of it. I've tried to say, no, nah, this, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. But, it, but, it's, but it's real. Like, I will bless my wife. Like, I'll bless her like above and beyond, meaning I, I'll spend... I spend on her for a holiday and then I give her more on top of that cash. And sometimes like I may have bills or what have you, but I know I got money coming in. I wait on the bill because that's a, that's an outside person. 
that's that's an outside person that's a bank that's a company but my tomorrow is not promised and if i die tomorrow that bill gonna die with me they 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 can't get that money and ain't, ain't nobody got to pay them that money people say oh it's left to this it's left to this person that person that, that stuff ain't true you're not paying your mama bills if your mama passed away you ain't paying your daddy bills if they passed away you're going it's going bankrupt because you don't even pay your own bills and you're living. So stop that lie. So I let that bill wait. And you know what I do? I say, you know what? My wife need her nails done. My wife need her hair done. My wife need a facial. My wife need, need a massage. My wife need a new outfit, a new dress. We need a vacation. We need to get away. And I invest in that. I will invest in that because... If the Lord called me home tomorrow, I want my wife to know I took care of her and I loved her today. I could not care less about that credit card bill. I ain't worried about them. They got write-off ability. They got stimulus from the government. I'm not worried about them. But I'm worried about making sure my wife know that I took out time for her, that I gave her time. I might have something to do. I might have something, some, some work, but I got to take out that time. Got to push everything to the side. Take out that time. I want her to know that I gave her not only my time, but I gave her everything in my power and everything that I could do. And the reason why I do that is because that's what Christ does for me. Now, if you don't believe in Christ, it's going to be a hard, it's going to be a high hurdle to jump over. But just think about it metaphorically then. Think about it principle-based. And I look at that and I'm like, wow, this is something. This is really something. It's a whole nother level here. And so I want you to understand that. And I want you to try this because this is what it's going to produce. When you treat your woman like a queen, when you treat her the way she deserves to be treated, when you treat her the way that you ought to treat her, let me tell you what's going to happen. It's going to produce an unshakable confidence. It's going to produce a confidence like you've never had before because now you are going to expect success and you're going to expect blessings. You're going to expect favor and it may not come right away, but you know that it's coming. And Jesus said to a man in the Bible, or it could have been a woman. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. So see, when you start to do right in one area of your life, you expect to do right and you expect to be blessed in every area of your life because you know that good is the byproduct of good. That more comes from sacrifice. That when you do what you're supposed to do, that you will be rewarded. So now you're going to take what you're doing in your marriage and you're going to go into your life, go into the world and you're going to go into it with, with a step, a pep in your step, with a smile on your face, with your shoulders up, your head up. And you're going to be confident. You're going to be in expectation. But you're also going to be humble. You're going to be kind. You're going to be compassionate. You're going to be giving. You're going to be forgiving. You're going to be expressive. You're going to be loving. You're going to be all of these attributes. Who's not going to want to hire you? Who's not going to want to support you? Who's not going to want to pour out into your life? Who's not going to want to give you a promotion? Who's not going to want to work with you or your company? Who's not? Who can hate you other than somebody who hates themselves? When you have channeled all of this from what you taught yourself by how you treat your woman. All of this correlates, all this go together. You could flush it down the toilet. You can ignore it if you want to. But if you ain't got peace, if you ain't got happiness, and if you ain't got blessings on top of blessings and favor abounds with peace and happiness and longevity, then you need to listen to this message because this is going to be as close as you get to it. It's going to help you get there. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. Make sure you get on over there, Tony Gaston Academy, everything else I got for you that I can't, you know, give my wife. It's on there for you. TonyGastonAcademy.com. God bless you.
and we'll talk soon. Make sure this thing here. Look here. You treat your wife right. She put your Super Bowl sign up. Treat your wife right. Get you these here balloons. Get your life together.